Hi everybody, my name is Mark Hilliard and I am a master here on the Arcanum and this is a special hangout with the members of the Mystical Light Cohort and we're going to discuss camera insurance today. Do you need it? Um, and I think that most of you know now that yes, you need camera insurance. Um, but we're going to discuss several different types of insurance that people use for their camera systems. And I'll show you some uh, examples of, of other types of insurance, and give you uh, testimonials uh, as to uh, how important this is. And if you don't have it, how badly the fail can actually be. Okay. Um, so anyways, let me start this off by saying that most people who have household insurance that uh, covers the belongings of the insurance, uh, the belongings of their household, uh, will find that they are covered to a small extent um, for precious high-cost items, and that includes cameras, firearms, jewelries, and monetary collections, things like stamps. And I said to a point, um, and specific to cameras, if the insurance company finds you lost, say, ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars of camera equipment to either uh, breakage, droppage, uh, thefts, or any other natural cause, and that the equipment could be classified as professional equipment, um, nine times out of ten they will refuse to honor any claim that you place. And if you are lucky enough to get them to honor the claim, they are going to hold your household deductible against the cost of the claim. And then they're going to add in depreciation. Um, so even a camera that you bought six months ago is going to be last year's model, and they're going to depreciate it probably 20 to 25 percent. Um, so using the household insurance while it can save you from the majority of the loss, it's not a very good idea. And you're, play, you're playing Russian roulette with it because there's no guarantee that the um, insurance company will end up honoring your claim or not. All right? Now, having said that, there is another type of policy that you can buy through your household company or through an independent third-party company. It's called an inland marine policy. I know that sounds weird, doesn't it? It sounds like we're going to insure boats. But what it is, it's a precious commodity insurance policy, and it covers specifics like cameras, firearms, money, jewelry, things like that. And what you have to do then is you have to do what is, you have to do a listing um, of the items that you wish to insure. Um, and that listing is called a schedule. So they are now scheduled items. And even then, most of the insurance companies will not give you uh, an insurance claim without a high deductible and a depreciation clause, meaning that they won't give you a full new replacement camera system for what you lost. And the majority of the inland marine camera policies are just good for the US. If you travel to Canada, you are out of luck. If you travel to Mexico, forget it. Okay? And for those of us that travel, those are the areas when we travel out of the country uh, where we're in the most danger, okay? Because we're not too smart when it comes to walking around a foreign country. We'll carry our big camera backpacks. And, and every company has, has thieves and robbers. We're no exception to that. All countries do. And if somebody sees you walking down the street with this big camera backpack, it doesn't take a brain to know that you're carrying cameras. Um, and people will walk up behind you and actually unzip that backpack without you realizing it and take three or four items out of it and be lost in the crowd. There are other 
uh, scenarios where it, they've been known to carry razor knives with them and cut straps and take the whole bag. Okay. Um, so there are some things that you can do to protect yourself. Number one, carry day bags rather than your, your, your large backpack so that you work out of a day bag, like a messenger bag that you hold over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say, uh, it doesn't have the name of a big camera manufacturer on it. It doesn't say Canon or Nikon. Um, it's in plain muted colors. Um, for all anybody knows, you could be carrying dirty da baby diapers in it. All right. So you got to be smart. Um, another thing is uh, cameras with great big long white lenses att attract attention. Okay. So be smart about what you're carrying around in a town with you. If you want to shoot that big long white lens, when you're set up and in location, then you dig it out and you attach it to your camera system. Um, black cameras are better for travel because they're less noticeable than our silver. Okay, so these are just some basic things that we can do. Now, how many of you stay in hotel rooms, right? Everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to a hotel room for more than a day, I put the do not disturb sign on the door and I leave it there. I don't want them to come in and make up my room. I don't want them to replenish my towels. When I need new towels, I will call the front desk and ask for them. This keeps um, the uh, maintenance staff and the house cleaning staff out of your room. Now that's not going to always protect you, but it's one less thing for you to worry about. You will find that most people are honest, okay? But if you're unlucky enough to get that one person that isn't, it's better to have them not exploring your room when you don't need them to. If you're going to leave camera bags in a car, cover them. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples of what not to do when it comes to that type of thing because I've been burned. Okay, um, so the Inland Marine Policy is going to cover you for th theft, loss, damage due to dropping, okay? Um, what it's not going to do is cover you for things like dropping your camera in a lake and not being able to recover it. You're going to have to have a police report generated for the, ca for the insurance company to honor um, your claim most of the time. Not all insurance agencies are that way. So, but that is another option, and they're relatively low cost uh, inland marine policies, okay? Everybody sells them. Now, let's say that we go to the next step, and you are a professional photographer. Well, in our field, most of us say that we're a professional photographer when we earn 20% of our income with our photography. The insurance companies say if you sold one single picture for a dollar, you're a professional photographer. And as a professional photographer, if you don't have a professional photographer's insurance policy, they will deny your claims. Okay, now if you, if you do a workshop, if you advertise a workshop, if you sell an image, and you advertise that you sell images, if you have a web page where you can sell images and display them, the insurance company is going to get you and they're going to cut your legs right out from underneath you. All right? So what are you to do? Well, that's the real question, isn't it? Okay? Um, you've heard of organizations like NAMPA, North American Nature Photographers Association. Okay, um, PPA, Professional Photographers Association. There are lots of, of professional organizations that pool their membership together into a group policy through an inland marine insurance company. And they will then offer professional photographers insurance. I have looked at them all. And I have settled on the NAMPA policy, the North American Nature Photography. 
And Elon, yeah, this this works for you too, okay? You, you know, here in Mexico, we have insurance law in Mexico is very strict or very. I, I don't know how to, how to say it, but the main advantage from what I'm hearing you that we have is that here in Mexico any kind of electronic equipment can be insured as an electronic equipment policy, a specific policy which covers obviously theft, uh, damage, m many things that normal uh, policies cover. The main advantage of that kind of policy is that it covers repairs so uh, at, a, at a lower cost. It's mainly used for large, let's say, mainframe computers or, or stuff like that, but it's not re uh, restricted to that. So that's one thing. The main problem here that we have is depreciation because once you buy a camera and you get out the door, it's going to cost 20% less. Yep. And I think that most electronic equipment here in Mexico by law terms is completely depreciated in four years. Okay, that, that, that's perfectly fair and it makes sense. Um, but what I'm saying is I do believe, and I could be wrong in this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, that you too can join NAMPA because you're, you're in the North American continent. Yeah. Okay, now, why NAMPA? Why PPA? Well, let me tell you something about what they offer. All right, and I don't get kickbacks for this. I think they're horridly expensive. When I'm done with this conversation, you'll understand. Nampa offers a group rate professional photographer's insurance policy. It is an inland marine policy, and it is a scheduled policy. Um, what this means is, is that there's no depreciation. If you have a scheduled item on this policy and it is stolen um, in South America or China um, or Singapore or if the squirrel in your backyard comes and grabs the camera straps and drags it over the, the railing of a balcony and it crashes into the rocks below and destroys it, it's covered. And if it's a scheduled item, let's just say that you, you bought a, a Leica camera for $9,000 last year and you insure that $9,000 as a scheduled item on your insurance policy and it is stolen. The insurance company is going to pay you the full $9,000. I don't care if it's one year old or ten years old. You get the full cost of what you paid for it. So because of this, it's a little bit more expensive, but you're way more protected, okay? Mm -hmm. um, they also offer, in the NAMPA policy, unscheduled items as well. Now, the unscheduled part of the policy, there's a $250 deduct deductible for, for each claim. And that's not each item, that's just each claim, okay? It can be multiple items. On the scheduled part of the policy, there is a $250 deductible, which is not even an important consideration if you're thinking about a ten or a twenty or a forty thousand dollar loss. You can insure your computers, your cameras, your lenses, your tripods, your cables, uh, your L brackets, everything. Okay, um, and like I said, this is called a scheduled policy. Now I'm going to share my screen with you here real quick. Um, everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. All right. This is the NAMPA website. All right. I, I strongly suggest that each of you consider joining this. One of the things that they have is they have this insurance plan. Okay. Um, you can have travel insurance, health insurance, equipment insurance. And this is the policy that I have. It is Rand Insurance, uh, okay, and it is underwritten by a, a large national company called Chubb. That's a weird name. Okay, but it covers everything. 
I don't care how you drop it, how you damage it, how it was stolen. I don't care what country you're in. It's covered. Yes, they would like a police report. No, it's not necessary. Uh, with a police report, you probably get your money in a week. Without it, it'll probably be two weeks. Okay? Now, a scheduled policy is this. If you would look at this document, this is my current list of my scheduled equipment that's on my policy. Now, I've taken away, you have to have serial numbers. I've taken that away out of here because everybody's going to be able to view this. But these are what I own. This is what I paid for it. This is where I bought it. This is when I bought it. So about seven months ago, I had just gotten back from a workshop uh, in uh, the Outer Banks. And my camera equipment was dirty, and I had two bags of all my camera equipment in my truck parked behind my gallery. And I was bringing in one bag at a time and cleaning the equipment. I had my first bag in, and I had the, the rest in the truck covered, locked, and somebody picked up a concrete block and threw it through the window of my truck and stole that camera bag. And that camera bag had $30,000 of Leica cameras and lenses in it. Okay? It had uh, two, two Leica bodies, one film, one digital. Um, it had multiple film bodies. It had major like glass in it, and it it added up to thirty thousand dollars. Now I was frantic, and I called the police. And I called my wife. The police came within twenty minutes. Took a report. While I was waiting for the police to come, I called Nampa, the Nampa insurance policy. I I called Rand, and they said, "Don't worry, you're covered for full replacement." Um, they asked if I had generated a police report, and I said, the police are coming over right now. And they said, when you get the report, fax it to me. And I said, I don't know what to do. This happened in December, towards the end of December. Like January the 12th, I had another workshop, and all my cameras were gone. Okay, and I said, I need the check so that I can replace this equipment, and I'm going to contact the vendors and tell them to hold the cameras for me. I said, not to worry, we'll do it for you. We'll even deposit the money directly into your checking account. So that equipment is called a scheduled item. Okay, so if you, if you get a policy like through Nampa and you do these scheduled items, whatever you paid for them is what you get back, minus a $250 deductible for the entire scheduled claim. Okay, so I, I had a, a Leica M7 film camera taken. I, I had uh, three Leica lenses stolen, at least five or $6,000 per lens. I had a bunch of Fuji bodies and Fuji lenses stolen. I had a couple of uh, Voigtlander lenses stolen, and I had a big one. I had a 240-millimeter uh, Leica R lens that cost me $10,000 that was in that camera bag, and it went away. They didn't blink an eye. They took it all in stride, and about five days later, there was a direct deposit into my checking account. Um, after I submitted the claim to them, I contacted the various companies, um, everybody was holding cameras for me, waiting to drop ship them to me upon payment. Okay? Um, so three days before my workshop, I had all of the equipment back except for that 240 millimeter Leica lens because that hasn't been made in 10 years. And I ended up finding one of those in South America on eBay and eventually replacing that as well. So, what does this policy cost? Well, for this $41,000 of equipment that's listed on this scheduled list, this cost $845 a year. Now, that also includes $2,000 of unscheduled insurance. 
that means the trifle items and some of the trifle items aren't so trifling um, a really right stuff carbon fiber tripod that cost a thousand dollars a ball head L brackets uh, memory cards batteries these kind of things now, I updated my unscheduled and increased it to three thousand dollars because I actually lost money on the unscheduled claim because I didn't have enough okay but the Nampa insurance is really really good now did they cancel me I know you're you're thinking that did they cancel me well no they didn't and in fact this was my second claim um, about eight years ago I had a Nampa insurance policy and I was up photographing on the Erie Canal in New York State in the wintertime and I was walking across the bridge over a lock in the canal and a buckle on a camera bag broke and the bag fell off my shoulder hit the railing and went soaring over the rail into about 40 feet of Erie Canal water and it went blurb and sunk to the bottom and they replaced that equipment while I was in New York and then I thought, oh, well, they've canceled my insurance. I never dealt with them again. So when I went out, when I went out and bought the like equipment about three years ago, I contacted them again and said, oh, I, I would like to have an insurance policy. I used to have one, but I think you canceled me. And she looked me up and she says, no, we didn't cancel you. In fact, you owe us money uh, because your policy wasn't totally paid for. So she charged me an extra $100 to cover the old policy reinstated it and then about a year after that policy came into being I had this major loss and I still have the policy and I haven't had any more losses because I'm more careful now okay um, and as long as we're careful and we try to be prudent owners of our equipment and take care of it these companies don't blink an eye at losses and they cover me for every country in the world. Okay? So, that, let's close this, do not save that, is called a scheduled coastal inland marine policy. Um, the big photography groups offer it. Nampas is the best because they are worldwide. Most of the others aren't. So I realize that most of you don't have forty thousand dollars of camera equipment. Are you sure? Well, no. I'm. I'm going to make a guess at that. No, I might be surprised. They so quick. <laughs> but you can also put your computers on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they offer life insurance. They offer health insurance. They offer travel insurance. Um, these are all good things. So it, let's just say you did twenty thousand dollars of insurance. It's going to cost you around four hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And while that seems high, it's money well spent on your very first claim because there's no depreciation. There's no major deductible. I mean, there is a two hundred fifty dollar deductible, um, and they're very forgiving for claims. All right. Like I said, they, they all have uh, various uh, policies, you know, PPA, um, the Wedding Photographers Association, WPA, they, they all offer this. But the only one that I have found to date that does international no depreciation insurance uh, is, is the NAMP. And I'm sure that there are others out there. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy and I, I, I tend not to go and do a lot of research and I've had such good results with Nampa that I went back to them and was excited when they took me back I thought oh wow you know this is a good thing so have any of you had lost well I know Ron has had some losses okay and Rhonda had you had a policy like this you wouldn't have had to have worried about getting those cameras repaired they would have just replaced everything for you and if they could no longer buy the model that you had 
you can you can you can update to a new model. Mm. All right. Nice. Okay. Uh, no, you don't need forty thousand, and most of us probably don't need twenty thousand. But I bet every single one of you have at least ten thousand dollars of photograph equipment in your home, if not more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you need to consider. Um, it can save lots of things. It can save a trip. It can save your profession. And most of all, it'll save your bank account because I could never afford to replace all of that equipment. I just couldn't. All right. So, do you all, has anybody had any um, uh, experience with insurance claims for cameras? Not yet. I'm about to. <laughs> Have you ever considered a dedicated camera insurance policy? I hadn't. I have a. I have the rider now, so we're going to see how that works. But okay. We'll see. Um, like I said, it saved my bacon twice now. All right, and I was just a week away from another major workshop, and I got it done and the equipment placed before that happened. So this is something that we need to consider. Yes, we can use the household policy, but there's going to be severe stipulations on what they will and won't do. And the second they find out that you have sold a dollar's worth of, of imagery, you're mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Okay, and they will be up with a brand new Canon 5D SR and a 24 to 70 lens for nothing. Yep. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. All right, that would have been way better. <laughs> See, you could have gotten that new 5DS. R. The, the 50 megapixel body. Yeah. When are we going to hear the story of her losses? I would like to hear that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let her <laughs> tell that story at the end. Okay. <laughs> uh, once we're stopped with the broadcast, we will share that with you. But uh, does anybody have any questions about this? Do you, do you see the need? And do you see the, the possibilities of having something like this? I do. I'm signing up for it on the website as we as you're talking. <laughs> yeah. so, to get to get this international policy through Nampa, though, you have to join Nampa. Yeah, and that's well, not, without that benefit. I stopped. I need to give a credit card. <laughs> yeah, being a member of Nampa has benefits too, because they have wonderful annual meetings and they have uh, photo uh, workshops. In fact, uh, I'm I'm leading. A Nampa photo workshop in February with two other Nampa uh, pro photographers uh, down in the uh, the swamps in in Florida and Georgia. Cool, and that's uh, a nice place to lose cameras. So there are there are benefits to being a Nampa member besides having their insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I hope that you got something from this. I see lots of glazed eyes and go, wow, that's a lot of money for the insurance. But, you know, $900 is nothing compared to $40,000 in a loss. Well, it's not even the loss. I mean, $900 is not even the price of a lens anymore. No. So. And, okay. and I guess that they will rate you depending on the type and amount of equipment that you want to, to insure. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes, it's all dependent upon the amount of money you are insuring. They have a formula on their website. Uh, you, you multiply uh, the, the, um, the replacement cost of the equipment by a certain figure, and that gives you your premium. Yeah, it's .0245. There you go. So, you know, if you only have 10000 it'll probably be a little over, what, $100 or something, 150 ish mm -hmm. Not so bad. Now they won't allow you to make monthly payments. You have to pay the entire policy up front, uh, and that that's 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 a large amount. Okay, you know it's a thousand dollars out of pocket for me every year, but I'll never miss it again. I will never let that policy lapse because it has saved my butt two times now. Mm -hmm. I have learned my lesson, and I'm prone to falling. Okay. I don't have very good uh, nerve control of my, my feet and my legs. I've had seven spinal surgeries. And there's not much left down below the belly button, trust me. 
Okay, so I have to be extra careful. Um, so having an insurance policy that protects me from my own stupidity and walking where I shouldn't be walking or in the wrong kind of shoes, or, uh, you can see the, 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 the logic of, of having a policy like that. And given the fact that you can travel, yep. you know, I mean, I'm sure you all travel once in a while somewhere. I go out of the country at least four times a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either on cruise lines, which I do a lot of cruising, uh, or on two international trips a year with my wife. All right. Uh, so if I have to use my 240-millimeter tinted lens to hit a, uh, a grizzly bear in the head that's running after me up in Alaska, then it's worth it. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any questions, I'm going to leave you to think about these things. Um, it is something that we need to think about from time to time. Um, but better before you break the camera. After you break before it. you break the camera, yes, indeed. Before your very next trip, you consider this, yeah. uh, because accidents do happen, Th thefts do happen. Mm -hmm. um, Pam, you fell down an embankment just the other day. Mm -hmm. Okay, what would have happened if you had dropped your tripod into the water? The camera and lens would have been done with. Yep. Or it fell over and hit a rock. Okay. Have you seen pictures of photographers on Facebook when the bear comes out and tries to make love to the tripod? Accidents happen. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of really strange things out there in nature, and you just never know what's going to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to end the broadcast. Uh, Consider what I've talked about here because it's something that will eventually f affect every one of us in our lifetime. I appreciate the time that you've given. And uh, this ends, thus ends this week's cohort hangout. And until next time.